Imagine a scenario where a quick habit, just a few seconds, can completely change your radiology report, can catch a disease early and potentially save a patient's life. That's the trick I'm going to show you today. It works for all radiology specialties, even for neuroradiology. It's a powerful trick, but very simple to execute. It's like looking out of the window in the morning before you choose what to wear for the day. This little check of the weather can make a big impact on your day. And if you're in a rush and forget to do it, bad things could happen. Like you might end up caught in the rain without an umbrella or drenched in sweat, wearing a sweater in the sun. So what is this habit and why does it matter? Well, to start with, let's take a step back and think about what radiologists are expected to do. Radiologists are always expected to see everything on all images, whether it's radiographs, CTs or MRIs, and to do so quickly because you have 37 other reports to do before lunchtime. These images can be reviewed many years later by anybody and any error will always be clear in hindsight. Also, depending on your work setup, you might get interrupted five times before you can actually finish your report. Like you need to go for an ultrasound, a patient has a question, you need to do an injection, someone calls you, or you need to toilet. What? Wait, let's pause this. If you go to the toilet during an unfinished report, seriously, don't do it. Please don't, just hold it, okay? Because interruptions are poison to a good radiology report as they completely kill your flow. But this habit I'm about to show you will also be beneficial even if you have to get interrupted from time to time, which is unavoidable in many institutions. It just takes around 7 seconds, but can make all the difference. But before I show you, what could happen if you don't do this habit? Well, first of all, you might miss relevant findings, which is not great in itself. Second, even if you detect everything, your report quality might still suffer. And last but not least, your average reporting time will be a bit higher without this habit. And if you are reporting on a paper study basis, this means you are leaving money on the table. Now, if you're slow to learn new habits or just refuse to change old ones, don't worry. At the end of this video, I will show you how you can still salvage your reports without using this habit and make them look nice on paper. But it comes with a catch meaning there is one thing that you will lose either way and I'll explain that at the end of this video. So let me show you how adopting this quick habit can protect you from missing relevant findings, keep your reports nice and tidy and make you a better and faster radiologist. So let's dive in. As radiologists, we don't want to miss anything, right? For our patient's sake and our own. One of the emotionally worst things that can happen during reporting as a radiologist is this. You are reporting a scan and you detect a big fat new cancer or recurrence in a previously cancer-free patient. Now the first thing you always do is check if there are any prior scans available and if yes, you check if the cancer was there before. A heavy feeling starts to build up in your stomach when you realize, uh oh, this cancer was already visible 6 months ago but smaller. Instinctively you check the report of that prior study to see if it was mentioned. And you start to wonder if some ER doctor screwed up and nobody ever read the report. With an increasing heartbeat you open the report, you scroll down and realize that it was missed. By you. This totally drags you down and your day is over, like you're done, okay? And for the next few days, it's very hard for you and you are more fearful in your reporting and self-doubts start to creep up again. Now that's a terrible feeling, but most radiologists have experienced this at some point in their career, me too. One way to reduce this risk is by making sure you kind of suspect already what is coming before you even start reporting. Well, you can't really know entirely, but you can get a sense of it. It's like watching a trailer of a movie. You get the direction and you get the style, but you don't know all the details about the story. In radiology, I call this habit skimming. The goal of skimming is to get a quick overview of a case within a few seconds. And here is how you do it. As soon as you open an imaging study like MRI, CT on your packs, even before you say anything into the microphone, even before you're loading your macros and templates, just take 7 seconds and scroll through most images quickly. So all the diagnostic series that you later will have to analyze. Look at them quickly, think about and absorb what you see, but do it super fast. Then ask yourself, what's the theme? Are there any major things popping out? Is there a tumor? Is it a young knee with a severe injury? Is it an old rotten spine? Does anything look postoperatively? This unconsciously primes your mind on what's going to happen in the next few minutes. It allows your brain to load the correct internal search pattern and ensures you're not going into your analysis cold. So that's the skimming habit in a nutshell. And after the next point, I'm going to show you a great example how skimming can improve your radiology reports. But first I will show you how skimming can help not to miss relevant findings and this is where it gets interesting. This next part of skimming is where opinions among radiologists diverge. Some radiologists like it, some don't, but everyone agrees they are ugly. Some institutions use them, others specifically don't want them because what's not there is not your responsibility. From a radiologist's point of view, 
They are the unloved, useless series that just make it unnecessarily hard for you to organize your hanging protocol. I think you guessed it by now, I'm talking about the localizers, the bane of every radiologist's existence. Localizers are the initial planning images MR technicians acquire to plan the proper diagnostic imaging series. They are incomplete and of very low and non-diagnostic quality. Now, earlier in this video, I explained skimming the process. Now, one part of skimming or the skimming process is also checking the localizers if you are reading MRI, provided you have them. And if they are in your packs, you must look at them. Still, often radiologists don't look at them because of their unworthy and non-diagnostic quality or they just forget. But here's the thing, by skimming also the localizers, you can and you will detect masses, liver cancers, kidney cancers, enlarged lymph nodes, gallstones, lung nodules, etc, etc, which otherwise would go undetected. Stuff that you will not see in the diagnostic series because they are out of the scanning range. There are plenty of examples where I personally detected relevant findings on the localizers like renal cancer on lumbar spine MRI, lung cancer on cervical spine MRI, metastasis of breast cancer in shoulder MRI, etc, etc. This occasionally will result in further imaging tests. So you need to either correlate this incidental finding with old imaging studies if you have them available and check if it was previously there and hope it was not missed and especially not by you. And if it's a new finding or you don't have any prior imaging, you might need to recommend an additional exam like an ultrasound, CT or MRI to evaluate further. This seven second skimming trick includes giving these localizers some love too. And look, it's not just about catching what's there, it's also about efficiency and speed. And this is also the reason why I have included a skimming chapter under general principles in my best-selling book, Speed MSK Radiology. You'll find the link of this book in the description down below. Skimming aligns your thought process, streamlines your workflow and prepares you for interruptions. Now that sounds all very theoretical, so let me give you an example. Okay, so you open an EMRI and you immediately start reporting the medial compartment without looking at the rest. Okay, so you say medial meniscus intact, mild cartilage thinning, no bone marrow edema, blah, 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 blah. Okay, then you go to the lateral compartment, you do the same, then you go to the central compartment, and lastly, you are about to report the patellofemoral compartment when you suddenly see a tumor in the musculus vastus lateralis infiltrating the quadriceps tendon. Okay, holy sh**. By this point, you invested already four minutes reporting completely irrelevant findings that nobody's going to care about. But remember how I told you that there is a way to salvage your report in such a scenario by losing something? So this is how you do it. You have three options. Option number one, you describe it at the end. Okay, so you just continue. You describe the tumor now after going through all the other compartments. You describe it in all its details at the end of your report and finish your description. Then you give a solid conclusion about the tumor and mention any other relevant findings. Now, so far so good, but your report sucks because the most important finding the only important finding is hidden at the end of your description. So you have option number two, describe it at the start. Now once again, you detect the tumor and once you detect it, you continue reporting the tumor in all its details, but then you copy the text from the tumor at the end of your description and put it at the beginning of your report. Now that's smart because you can then give the same conclusion as in option one and then you have a nice decent report. You fix the problem of option one by starting with the most relevant finding. But you will have a lengthy report because you reported all those mostly irrelevant other findings over three to four minutes when nobody cares about the mild cartilage thinning in the femur if you potentially have cancer. So option number three, you start over. You start over completely, like you delete everything, start from scratch, describing the tumor in all its details and add a short unstructured paragraph at the end stating any other relevant findings which might or might not be present in the other compartments. Then you give a short and concise conclusion. Now you really have a lovely report that looks great and is easy to read, nice. However, there's the catch. You lost three to four minutes of your precious reporting time. On the upside, the patient and referring doctor are happy and they don't care about this. They are happy with your report. They don't mind if it took you 10 minutes, 20 minutes, right? So they say, good job, but you should care. By skimming before reporting, you would have realized within seven seconds of opening all images that there is an unexpected tumor there. You could have started right away with that, being four minutes faster and not feeling like a donkey walking in circles around the fountain. If you are a fast radiologist, that is enough time to report another knee MRI. And if you all get paid per report, this is how you make more money. So skimming can help us also with interruptions. And it's always better to realize at the start that there is an important incidental finding, especially in the localizers, because chances are higher you will remember it and report it. If you rush back from a longer than expected ultrasound or toilet break, Seriously, with only two minutes left before you have to go to the infiltration that's already waiting for you and you need to urgently finish this report that you already tried to finish three times, I bet you will not look at the localizers anymore at the end and you miss the incidental finding. So I have shown you a simple seven second habit to be a better radiologist. But this alone is not enough to write reports that really impress clinicians. You still must know what makes a great report in the first place. 
The easiest way to do that is watch this video next for 5 tips to level up your radiology reports.